So we're going to talk about the periodic law. This is the idea that when elements are arranged in order of increasing atomic number, like they are on the periodic table, there's a periodic or repeating, kind of a repetition of their physical and chemical properties. Um, basically speaking, so if you have things in groups, remember those are the things that go up and down, the, because the electrons, the elements all have the same outer electron configuration, they're going to have very similar properties. So we're going to look at a series of trends or patterns on the periodic table in this chapter, and we'll start by looking at some of these different groups. So if we look at the periodic table here, you can label these groups across, okay, 1, 2, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You can also number these 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We usually don't, though. We just call them the transition metals. Okay, so all these guys in here are just the transition metals. Okay, we learned that last chapter. So those are all your D block, and they tend to have similar properties. Okay, so group 1 here are called the alkali metals. Okay, so make sure you're writing these down. Group two are the alkaline earth metals. Alkali and alkaline is the same as basic. So these things tend to make basic solutions, okay, as opposed to acidic solutions. The second to last group, the 17, are called the halogens. Okay. And the last get group, of course, are called the noble gases. So let's talk about each of these groups a little bit more. So the alkaline metals, okay, this first group, group one, are your metals lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. So here's some pictures of them. So their characteristics, one, they're all silver colored metals, okay. You can look at a picture of lithium here, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, uh, and more rubidium. <laughs> uh, this is actually, this is actually francium. I made a mistake there, sorry. So, uh, and they're also really soft metals. You can actually cut them with just a dull kind of butter knife, all right? This picture here, the th a third characteristic is that they're very, very reactive. They tend to react very quickly with lots and lots of things and they get more and more reactive as you go down the group. So francium is much more reactive, say, than lithium. Okay? And notice we're not including hydrogen in this group. Even though it's in the same group, it's not an alkaline metal, right? Because it's a gas. And the last category is that they, if you throw them in water, they tend to react very vigorously. Again, lithium will only react kind of a little bit, right? And then these other pictures here are pictures of sodium and potassium reacting with water. And they usually get some pretty good fireworks. They're kind of cool. So the next group we're going to talk about here, all right, the second group, group two, are your alkaline earth metals, right? Um, they are, their characteristics are that they're harder, kind of denser and stronger than alkaline metals. They have higher melting points than alkaline metals. And they're less reactive. So if I throw them in water, so if I throw magnesium or calcium in water, they don't usually do anything at all. They just kind of sit there. And here are some pictures of your alkaline earth metals. They're not great pictures, but basically they're all kind of silver metals. This group here, we said was group 17, or right next to the noble gas. These are your halogens. Okay, halogens. These are the most reactive of all of your nonmetals. Okay, so your alkaline metals are really reactive, and the halogens are the really reactive nonmetals. Okay, they're very electronegative, which you don't know what that means yet, but you're going to learn soon. Okay, and they tend to react really, really actively with metals. So if you take a metal and a halogen, you're going to form an ionic compound pretty quickly. Okay, and the most reactive of these is fluorine, and the least is iodine which is the opposite of the metals, right? They got more reactive as you went down, but the halogens get more reactive as you go up. Um, and they're all a little different, okay? Fluorine is a yellow gas. Okay, you can't quite see there that it's yellow. 
chlorine. I, hopefully you can see in there that there's some, it's a green gas. Um, bromine is this dark brown liquid, right? It's one of the two elements that are liquids. And iodine is a black solid. Well, it looks black, but it's actually purple. Uh, it's, so, it's so dark purple that when it's a solid, it looks black. But if we let it sublime into the vapor, you can see that it's purple. The last group we want to talk about are your noble gases, right? That's your last group. Your helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. These are the ones that don't react. And mainly that's because they have full energy levels, right? S2, S2P6, S2P6, S2P6. They all have, all except helium, they have eight valence electrons. And that's the most stable that you can be. So these things are going to tend to not react at all. And these are the gas tubes. Okay, that's a helium light, so this is a gas with electricity through it. Neon you've seen, that's argon, krypton, and xenon. So those are some of the groups for which you're going to be um, responsible.